So hello everyone, we are going to solve the pseudocode questions for Cape Gemini, right? Uh, very, very important thing. So half of your questions would be in C or C++, uh, pseudocode input output questions and half of your questions would be based upon data structures. I am going to solve actual questions and I've taken some uh, questions which are a little on the difficult end on purpose because the level of difficulty, first of all, of the exam is a little high. Second thing is a lot of people focus upon easier topics and then thus they are not able to solve the difficult ones. And so for example, graphs is uh, uh, in data structures, 50% of the questions that we saw last year also being asked in Cape Gemini test were based upon graphs. And uh, in uh, so input output type that is C and C++ 50, no, I'll not say 50, I'll say 30% of the questions that were asked were based upon recursion. Right. So let's go ahead. Now, again, uh, Wipro as of now is hiring. Deloitte as of now is hiring for uh, 2021, 2022 and 2023 batches. So make sure that you follow us on all of our social media handles, uh, Instagram, Discord, WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook, etc, etc. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram, Discord and Telegram and WhatsApp, at least these four, because sometimes we wouldn't post any on off campus drives or on campus drive on here uh, on these uh, on let, let's say whatsapp but we'll post it only on instagram because to be honest we are a little greedy about followers so that goes without saying right to so make sure the link to all of them are in the description of the video and as always the top three comments get the prep insta prime subscription so it could be you know uh, uh quite uh, or basically some explanation to a particular question that i've taken some uh, good experience that you had with prep install some good doubt uh, you, you can always ask that in the comment section right so let's go ahead and solve our first question okay now to be honest this is the question what I'll be expecting you to do is I would be expecting you to solve this on your own so I hope you pause the video and then you are now watching my explanation right uh, so let's go ahead so essentially what's happening here, k value is 3, j value is 4, it's being accepted k here, j is being accepted here. There's a condition where k equal to 1 and k is equals to, okay, so my fault, uh, let me just fix this and I'm really sorry. So it should be k is equals to 0, right? So let's go ahead and uh, so these are the base cases. Now if you look closely, this is nothing but a recursive function in our prime video course we have approximately 10 videos just for recursion and let's say a lot of you are would be a prime video students so you remember i've always told you to look for what kind of recursion it is how how the tree is growing and also the base case so if you look here this is nothing but just like a fibonacci kind of a tree right in fibonacci you also have this two recursion in addition right uh, and the base case is when k is equals to 0 or k is equals to 1. So let's go ahead and draw the recursion tree. So the first time our function gets called, it gets called, it gets called for k is equals to 3 and j is equals to 4. Now obviously we move inside for the first time, right? This condition does not get satisfied because not k is not 1 or 0. Then basically what happens, we go to the else part. Now in the, in the recursion tree, Basically, there are two recursions, right? So one recursion here. There's one more recursion on the right hand side, which I'll not draw as of now. The reason why the program does not know it is going to happen. As soon as the program reads this, it goes below to the recursion tree, right? So it goes below. The value of k for this new function would be k minus 1, that is 2. And j would be j minus 1, that is 3, right? Now this function runs again. So what essentially is happening again, this condition is again not true. So it comes down to the else part. Again, only left hand side part is would be implemented. So it will go down recur again, wherein our k value would be one and our j value would be two. Now this time again, we are going ahead and recurring. 
again func g k minus one comma j minus one happen. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm sorry. This time our k value is equal to equal to one. So what would happen? This condition would get satisfied, and then thus we would be returning one. So this function goes back and returns one. Now for this particular iteration, we just calculated the left hand side part that is this. But there's this pending right hand side part that we did not calculate. So now we'll go ahead and calculate that. So for this one, again the recursion gets called. We are saying k minus two. So basically our k value for this one is zero, and uh, our j value is basically uh, what is j? J value becomes six. Now obviously when we'll go ahead, uh, this case would get. Uh, satisfied, right? So, which is why this will also be returning one, right? Now, for this three, we've already calculated the right part, so which is nothing but one plus one, which is nothing but two. So, this would go back and return two. Now, again, for this recursion call, what is pending? We calculated the left part, so again the right part would go ahead and be calculated for it. So again for the right part of it, func is equals to k minus two, right? So our k value is three. K minus two is nothing but one, right? As we know for one, this base case would be hitting, so it'll be returning one. I don't even, to be honest, care j plus three, so our j would become seven, to be honest. But there's no use of j. So simply it stops here, hits the base case, and it also returns one. So finally, what would happen? Two plus one, nothing but three. So basically, to be honest, I showed you that very very in deep. But to be honest, how I would have been solving it was base case, this, this. So this is how I would have solved it quickly. So I would have seen that okay, there are two function calls. So I would have directly and then uh, basically hitting base cases as one and two. And there is to be honest, no use of j. I quickly saw that. So basically, I'll just draw this, 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 and I'll write the value of k that is three. Here it will be two, and here it will be one since it is one, so it will be returning one. And then here it is one. And then here it is zero, so this also would hit the base case, so would return one. This would return one. So this one plus one is nothing but two, and then two plus one is nothing but three. So answer is three. So this is how I would have solved this quickly within fifteen twenty seconds, right? Uh, I kind of explained you in a way so that you would learn, but this is how also you should be solving them because time is crucial for some questions like this. You will need a lot of time, and for some questions you can save time, right? So let's go ahead and let's have a look on this question. So what the uh, what these are saying is, uh, I hope that you have paused the video and try to solve it on your own. So you have x y z. Just give me a second. So you have x y z. Your x value is minus three. Your y value is zero. Now there's if. Now obviously this loop will get executed hundred percent because if of one. However, there's we don't know about this loop because there's a condition here. So let's check. So y minus two is basically zero minus two is less than two. Yes, it is true because minus two is less than true. So obviously this part of the code will get implemented. Now the question is, and you have to pause the video and tell me how many times do you think this for loop and this for loop both of them are same would get implemented? Now a lot of you would say one, a lot of you would say zero. Actually the answer is sorry, uh, two. Actually the answer is two. Now I'll tell you the reason why. A lot of you would think that okay, from zero, so this is basically three minus two is one, and three minus two is one. So you would say that okay, it'll run for zero, but as soon as it tries to increment its value to one, it'll not run for this loop. It'll only run for zero. However, this is fine if the for loop was written in a format of for int of i, let's say i. Is equals to zero and i is less than n and i plus plus. In that case, n is one. So in that case, it would have had been fine. But okay, it will only run for the iteration of zero. That is, it will only run one times. 
but in this case it would not the reason why it's pure english yes the code is the, this is the pseudo code but if to understand in the pseudo code there's english written so basically they are saying 0 to 1 now if i tell you tell me the digits that are between let's say for for each digit from 0 to 10 so what will you say you will say 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 also right if i say 1 to 10, you'll include 1 and you'll include 10 also. you'll you'll and include include not be like okay 0 to 10 is nothing but 0 to 9 okay so you have to understand this also a lot of python people will say no no it's basically kind of like a python code python code basically range 0 to n so here n is non inclusive or if you would argue that to be honest no no not a python code it's a c code uh <coughs> so it doesn't work that way also if you look closely even if you want to think in the direction of python it says each so you think of it as each in the list so if the list is 2 or uh, the length of the list is 2 so in that case you would print for the zeroth one and the first one also <coughs> i'm sorry right so let's go ahead so basically this will run two times this will run two times now let's run these so the first time x is equal to x plus y minus 3 so x is equal to minus 3 plus y that is 0 minus 3 so our x value becomes minus 6 correct now again this loop runs for the second time so this is for the iteration of 0 the, for the iteration of 1 it will run again so our x would become x is equal to the current value of x is minus 6 for the second loop so minus 6 plus 0 that is y minus 3 so our x becomes minus 9 let's move ahead now for this one also same two times it will run uh our x is equals to minus 9 plus y plus 5 that is 0 plus 5 so minus 4 and it will run again so x is equals to minus 4 plus 0 plus 5 so it becomes 1 the answer is 1 now to be honest on purpose they've given you this to confuse you because if you run it one time so if you run this for loop one time you will get minus 1 as the answer but if you run it two times you will get one as the answer both of them are in the options so you have to understand this okay so let's move ahead to so next question to be honest i've taken this question also in one of the accenture videos i guess i guess the next questions are going to be unique the reason why i wanted to take this particularly was uh because this question is very good it's why it's actually very good to be honest even i was confused i want i welcome you to pause the video and try it on your own uh let's go ahead right so 11 4 3 these are the three values that have been given to us now basically to be, to be honest it's too complicated there is not here there is not equal to here there is equal to here there is double not equal to as soon as i look look upon it my brain says it has something to do with bitwise operators of let's say i would have to convert it into bits I I was thinking in this direction when I saw the question, but to be honest, when I broke it down, not exactly. If you look at this, what is this? Just like we have equal to equal to operator, which is nothing but comparison operator. So we have not equal to operator, which is not equal to comparison, right? So basically, we use it in a for loop. That is, if let's say x equal to equal to zero. So what would happen if it is equal to zero? So this condition is true, and whatever is inside the if loop gets implemented. If this is false, then whatever is inside the loop does not get implemented. So basically, our x value is not getting assigned to zero. Our x value is stays whatever it was. It's just being compared with zero. That okay? Are you zero or not? Same thing. If I say x is not equal to Zero. So, and inside an if loop, so I'm saying the same thing. That is, if x is not equal to zero, then implement all of these in the loop. And if it is equal to zero, then don't implement whatever is in the loop, right? So the, again, there's no assignment happening. There's just comparison happening. 
right so if i look at this line to be honest i should not even care what is this is relevant if i just write if i am writing inside if if a equal to equal to 3 so there is no assignment happening if i write if a is not equal to 3 there is no assignment happening and both of these thing there is comparison happening the value of a remains unchanged to what it was before if i don't have this if loop right and i just simply write in a line a equal to equal to 3 so to be honest yes there is a comparison happening this kind of tries to return true or false or basically zero or one but it tries to return but there's nothing to catch it you get it so it's lost so same thing is happening here we are trying to compare it with some value to be honest we don't even need to compare the compare this because there's only comparison the value of b which was 4 earlier after implementing this line also it will still remain 4 no change so our b will still be 4 let's move to the next line now again this is a little complicated right so let's break it down let me write it as a and put brackets like these let's first just solve this so let's say our a value is 11 right now i want to just remind you something in terms of true and false in c and c++ any positive number represents that the value or the boolean comparison is true and basically it's zero represents it's false right so what does not operator do not operator is basically so if i say not of true it says it would return false and if i say not of false it returns true basically i can also say not of 1 is nothing but 0 because true is generally represented as 1 but it can also be represented as any positive number not of 0 is nothing but 1 so let's break it down again if i say not of any positive number so am i saying not of true yes i am so what would this be returning as it will be returning as false so not of 11 is nothing but in terms of boolean it is false but in terms of false it is zero so it will be zero but since there is another not here so i need to solve not of not of 11 right this kind of returned me zero so i'm looking to solve not of zero now what is not of zero flip it zero becomes one so one gets assigned to c so our b is 4 because it remained 4 our c is 1 because we change it to 1 so there is no bitwise operator happening so answer is 4 and 1 let's move ahead okay now let's have a look upon this question now the reason why i have chosen this is because i know 90% of you would not know what i am going to teach uh but the point is i want to tell you there are some hidden facts that you may assume that you know data structures but to be honest you don't so for example b trees right uh so for b trees to be a multi way search tree non root nodes have non root node has at least how many non empty children now if you know a little bit about b trees what it says is this is kind of some definitions or some rules or observations in b trees right which are multi way by the way so the root has at least two sub trees unless it's not blah 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 one key point a is here at most m non empty children and at least m by 2 non empty children 
in our case we say order is m so at least m by 2 that is 6 by 2 so the answer is 3 let's go back answer here is 3 now you would argue atulia fine right i understand i'm really sorry i showed you what i shouldn't have showed you uh let me just close that out right so how do you know all of this or how how can i know all of this again so basically get prep insta prime subscription we have our cape gemini course also here and just give me a second right and apart from that we have our where's this cape gemini course okay here it is right so we have this cape gemini course you can check the syllabus of whatever we are covering so you can also check that we are also covering data structures and everything everything in advance also it's prep insta prime subscription is just like netflix you will not just be able to access our cape gemini course but also c c plus plus java python dsa for service based companies intermediate coding basic coding competitive coding so in our dsa course we are covering this approximately 50 plus hours of dsa course have shot and we have covered in that so we'll talk about this a little later uh, you can also study from prepinsta.com also uh, very quickly i'll just show you so prepinsta.com so you can go to this page and from here you can go to programming and data structures here uh, but to be honest these are pages so you'll have to learn it on your own uh, prepinsta prime is like basically netflix for your placement preparation so it will help you in a basically video based preparation way we'll talk about that a little later in the course right so let's have a look on the question so basically what the question says is there are a few things that you should be taking care of in your mind adjacency matrix simple and a regular graph so there are three things i'll talk about these two a little later let's talk about adjacency matrix right so what i've done already is for this one and this one i've already drawn the adjacency matrix so let's go ahead and let's see basically how we can draw the graph using adjacency matrix right so basically i've already drawn it but i'll redraw it for you so let's say this is a this is b this is c and basically one represents if there is between a and b is there any edge or not and zero represent that there's no edge also to be honest you can draw it like this also like probably this also it's up to you however you want to draw the graph though basically how the graph looks doesn't matter the connections matter right so which is why i've kind of drawn it like this so this is my a this is my b and this is my c so this is a b c already on the right i've drawn everything so they a to a so firstly i'll look at this row a to a there is no connection a to b yes there is a connection between because there's one so a to b there's a connection similarly a to c yes there is a connection then i'm done with this line right let's move to the next row so b to a there's a connection so b to a there's already a connection right because obviously basically since it's a undirected graph which is why a to b and b to a both of them will be having connections if it was a uh, uh, directed graph then it wouldn't have that right so basically b to a there's a connection b to b there is no connection b to c there is a connection then we are done with this line let's check for the next one c to a there is already a connection c to b there is already a connection c to c also there is a connection now this becomes a problem there is on the left hand side there is this graph a simple graph is the definition of simple graph is there should not be any loops but there are loops so which is why option number a is not our answer now let's have a look upon the option number b or, or let's let's have a look upon the option number c to be honest which is the right answer but i'll tell you why it is the right answer so let's go ahead <clears throat> let's have a look upon this so basically this is the graph if you want to draw this line this line is the same this row this row is the same this row and this row is not the same there's only one difference that is this and this is not there so that is c to c there is no direction c to c there is no connection 
so which is why the graph kind of looks like this so there is no loop like here there is a loop there is no loop so which is why it's a simple graph but is it a regular graph <coughs> so a graph is said to be regular if all the local degrees are of same number r all the degrees of any node should be same now let's have a look upon the degree degree is basically how many vertices or how many edges are growing out of that particular node so here there is one and then there is two so which is why degree is two for this one for this one also one two so degree two for this one also one two so degree two so it satisfied both simple and also regular so this is the answer which is i guess option number c however option number b which is this is not the answer let's have a look upon it very quickly so i'll just draw this very quickly for you so a b c so a to a there is nothing a to b there is a to c there is then uh, b to a there is then there is nothing from b and then c to a there is so this is the graph now to be honest there is no loop so yes this is a simple graph but it's not a regular graph because if you look here the degree of this is 2 but the degree of this is 1 and the degree of this is 1 because again from this there's only one edge from this there's only one edge but with this there are two edges 1 and 2 so our correct answer is this one let's move ahead to the next one okay now find if graph 1 and 2 are self complementary graphs or not if not then why right uh to be honest i want to keep this question for you i want you to research upon it i, I i'll tell you the answer uh yes they are self complementary because because one thing that and i'll give you also a hint because they mentioned non trivial and trivial so basically they've not mentioned that okay it should be a trivial complementary graph so which means non trivial right so yes they are a self complementary is basically meaning is whatever connections are between this and this there are no connections between this and this at all direct connections they are not they are not direct connections same thing this and this no direct connections you learn about this to be honest this is a very large topic it's very difficult basically any graph if you look at the self complementary graph of it is exactly opposite that whatever are the connections uh, the reverse connection should be made and then there can be multiple such things as well right but all of these uh, nodes should be included right now the next question which is basically i'm giving for top 3 comments is essentially this question here now i want you to be able to solve this question whoever solves the question and gives the best explanation i will personally be choosing that person for the top 3 comments so for the next 2 days since the video is uploaded i'll check personally myself try to look out for the best explanation it's all my phone is lying there so i could have shown you obviously your prepensa youtube is logged in and my phone so that's the question this is also again an actual question asked in cape gemini uh, right so cape gemini pseudo code very important graphs and everything very important um you can read this question these are the options you know in this gray area i've also written that okay uh, these are the few hints that the question gives you right okay so now uh, when we try to solve this particular question there are errors that we encounter so the first error so if you just give me one second so there are a few errors the first error that we encounter here is so for example this statement this particular part of the statement would cause error now the reason why uh, in fact not this this particular part of the statement would cause an error the reason why what you are trying to do is you are trying to increment uh, the address of array right so essentially if if let's say if i say that x is equals to arr plus plus so in that case maybe it would have had been fine right but 
I am trying to increment the address of the array. You cannot be like that. Okay, let's say the value was stored. So uh, first and foremost important thing is a lot of people do not know this. When I write a r r of bracket, right? So essentially, what am I saying here is I am talking about the zeroth. So let's say if the array values are one comma two comma three comma four comma five. So these are the array values. So when I say this, so essentially when I percentage d this, so what would get printed here? The zeroth element would get printed. So the value one would get printed. But when if I remove this bracket and I just simply write arr, so essentially I am talking about the address. So this is important. A lot of people know do not know this. This bracket is basically an operator which is called as value. at operator in c a lot of people do not know this and if you put arr of bracket of so basically by default it's saying zero so it's th this and writing this is exactly the same right if however i specify arr of one so in that case i'm talking about this two but if i just simply write arr so i'm basically saying that okay i'm talking about address so essentially this arr if you have some variable called as n right so this arr of bracket is comparable to this n and this arr is comparable to ampersand of n so a lot of people do not know this so essentially what you are telling your program is that okay probably the address was at 4000 and the 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 starting address was 4000 and then the value stored let's say here was some garbage value so right gb now what you are telling is you are telling that okay increment the address so it's like it is giving you an error that it says that okay address is based on compiler you cannot increment the address you can reach the incremented address but essentially you cannot tell me that okay now 4000 your address value which was earlier 4000 is now 4004 right so essentially this would be wrong a lot of people may not have understood this uh in that case you do not know c really 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 well right so this may be a problem so let's try to run this particular program once right so and let's see uh, what exactly happens here right so if you just give me a second so essentially what happens here is if i try to run this particular program so if i click upon run here so it gives me an error l value is required as increment operand so this gives an error right now how you can approach this is if i run this updated program right so let me just uh, you know change a few things here so that you can understand it so i can say this arr now in this case what would it give it to me it would give me the address in decimal format that is unsigned decimal format so this is the address right i can get also this in the like uh, you know normal general format uh, of address so in that case if i write star p so in that case uh, you can see so this is hexadecimal format that we've got 0 x on so on so forth right if i write instead of p if i write d so the same address but converted into a format of integer type of format but then again i could also write this percentage u so that you know i convert that value into an unsigned value right so this is basically the program would work but however if i try to do this in that case it would give me error so that is what the question is saying right now If you want to do this, what you can do is I can copy paste the same thing. I'll write it again, and then if I want to do this, I what I can do is I can write plus one here, put a bracket, and then in that case, let's run this particular program. So as you can see here, the last address is four four, and then when when I write this plus one, the address has gotten changed to four eight. So essentially, this is giving you the address of arr of zero. this is giving you the address of arr of 1 right so which is why it's very important for you to know however you can't do arr plus plus you cannot increment the address that okay 4000 was the address value so i cannot increment the address value i can increment the value inside the address so again important very important you can increment the value inside the address so i can say arr of this i can say So let's say I give them the values as one comma two comma three comma four comma five, right? And okay, so I can't increment this. I have to increment this, 
right so as you can see so here we've used postfix operator so which is why rather than that uh, because obviously one value will come i should use prefix so that you know we get two here so i can do this so in that case you will get two as an answer here so again i've tried to explain you as much as i can uh, in regards to this particular question right so let's go ahead and uh, start with the next question that we have here right so for the next question this is the particular question that we have here uh, i have taken this on purpose so that you know all of you understand how to approach these kind of questions so this is this particular question is not cape gemini question the previous question was cape gemini question but then again i've chosen i've chosen it so that you understand what is happening so in the in this particular case you have to predict the output of this particular question okay uh, so guys let's try to understand what is happening in this particular problem right so again for me to uh, explain you this i have to go into a little theory and then again i do i I saw that there are a few videos on YouTube which are essentially very baby type of videos and those questions are not even Cape Gemini questions, right? Uh, Cape Gemini likes to test you a lot or would wants to ask a little difficult questions, right? So in this particular case, what is happening when you just say, uh, so for example, when I just say percentage U and I say ARR, right? So essentially what is happening, so for example, this is my array. How many elements are there? Five. So let's say this, 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 this. So for example, one, two, three, four, five. So for example, there are five elements in the array, which are one, two, three, four, five, not garbage value, I exam assume, right? So when I say percentage U, and when I just simply say ARR, so this is kind of returning me the address of this ARR of, so ARR of zero. So basically both of these things are the same thing, right? So this and this are the same thing, right? So in this case, if I say ARR, right? So in that case, what I'm going to get, so it says that, okay, assume the base address is 2000. So I'm going to get 2000. However, I say ARR plus one, right? So essentially in this case, what I'm doing is I'm getting the address of the next one here. So in that case, I'm getting 2004. However, when you say ambassade ARR, so when you say ambassade ARR, so you are talking, so in this case, I was talking about, so ARR, ARR plus one. So I was just talking about this, but when I say just ambassade ARR, so I am talking about this whole array, right? So when you add one to the whole array or the address of the whole array, so you're going to get the starting address of the next memory. So in this case, so let's say in this case, it's 2000. It's 2004, then 8, then 12, then 16. So in this case, you are going to get, so this value would be starting from 2020, right? So you would get, first, you would get here 2004. And with this one here, you would get 2020. So option number A in this particular case would be correct answer, right? So you should know basic concepts of C. So if you do not know them, so in that case, you know, you're not going to clear the class. What I'll personally suggest you is maybe go ahead with Prepensa Prime Video course of Cape Gemini. What we've done is along with the game-based aptitude test, English, pseudo code, all the other things, we're also giving you C and C++ and data structures, whole course, 25, hours of course of C and C++, 30 hours of course of data structures in, so data structures course is available in all languages, Java, C, C++ and Python, right? And along with that, you get certifications in all of them. So nano degree courses, you are getting free with it. So we'll talk about that later part, uh, later in the video, right? So let's go ahead to the next question. Okay, so here's the next question. Okay, so let's go ahead. A lot of you would be thinking, and I know this is a little easy question for the people who know this concept, and this is a difficult question for the people who do not know this concept, right? So essentially, a lot of people would be thinking that, okay, this would be, uh, so essentially, if I use my pen, so in that case, a lot of people would be thinking that, okay, this would be printed. However, this would not be printed. This would be printed. Now, the reason why is, so essentially, when you pass this ARR, so what gets passed here, it gets passed as a pointer or pointer to a memory location, right? So when you calculate int of n, that is size of ARR divided by size of ARR of zero. So in that case, you are dividing the size of the pointer, which is eight, and you're dividing it with the size of ARR, which is int, because this, this value that has been passed is passed as a pointer, right? So you're dividing eight by, so eight by four, that is, 
2 so essentially the first two elements would be printed this one and two would get printed right now let me just demonstrate the same to you very very quickly so uh, so for example if i go ahead and run this particular program so as you can see this is the output that has come one and two however if i want to solve this i can include one more thing is i can say size uh, and i can particularly say that okay you know this particular statement that i have written here i can say in size is equals to this and comma <coughs> int size and then i can say int size here and when i run this one in that case this would give us all the output that is one two three four five six seven eight just as perfectly as it should be right so this is essentially how we would be able to solve this particular problem right so let's go ahead and go uh, and do the next question okay so let's try to understand what is happening in this question right so first a lot of you will say that okay nine is the answer because prep insta has total nine characters right however this is not the answer the correct answer is one in this particular case right so let's go ahead and understand why uh, one is the answer so the, the reason what happens is scanf returns so obviously you know scanf will read the input right however it returns the number of arguments read right so in this case scanf returns number of argument it has read so essentially the percentage s or percentage d and all of these values that it has right so basically it has read one argument that is stored in arr using just one percentage s so it will return one right uh, uh, so it will return the number of arguments that it has read so it will return one right and then one would get printed here so for example if i run this particular program so you would see that okay one has been printed here right so i'll write prep insta here and then one has been printed here however i can modify it a little so that you would understand a little better i can say that okay there's one more array as arr of two whose size is also 100 and then i can say okay arr of two we are trying to read here and then rather than that i will use two percentage s's here right so now when i run this particular program so let's say i say prep insta and uh, prime as the second argument here so when i run this you get two because it has read two arguments so scanf would return the number of arguments that is two and then that two would be read in percentage d here so essentially why which is why this is the answer right so let's go ahead and uh, do uh, go ahead with the next question okay so let's go ahead uh what i will do will would do here so i've already written out this particular program right so the, what what would happen here you would actually be getting an uh, error here so if i run this particular program so let's go ahead and see so as you can see here it's saying array the array type has incomplete element type int of this 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 right so now a lot of you will say no obviously we can say int arr of and not include like let's say 10 and then rather than that we can just you know write uh, the number of arguments so let's say 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 so on so forth right it would just work perfectly why this is giving the error the reason why this gives the error is, so only in 1d elements you can do but if your array has more than one dimensions then you should always and always specify all the other dimensions uh, apart from the first dimension right so for example if i write this so i need to specify so I, if i write 100 here and then i run this particular program then you would the program would run perfectly however if i let's say do this let's say three dimensional array then again it would give us the error again if i do like uh, give the only the third one again it would give the error so i would need to uh, write for the last uh, for the third dimension and for the second dimension so all the other dimensions apart from the first dimension you have to specify in the array so it would not work like this or it would not work like this or it would not even work like this it will only work when all the other dimensions apart from the first dimension is specified right so that is exactly how it would be working right so let's go ahead to the next particular question okay so uh, you know what i'll do very very quickly is i'll try to write this particular program very quickly uh, so that we can understand it a little, little better because apart from the program there are a few things so for example uh, that you also need to know so for example if i write int of i and i write int of arr of let's say 5 and just do not give any values and then i write for uh, i is equals to let's say 0 and uh, i plus plus uh, sorry i is less than 5 and then i plus plus and then we print all the values so for example print 
printf and I write percentage percentage d comma arr of i and I think that's pretty much about it, right? So let's run this. The reason, uh, so as of now, I have not written this equal to one here. So as of now, I have not written this, right? So I'll remove this particular part. This is the only change. So let me run it now, right? So when I run it, uh, as you can see, what would happen here, garbage values would be printed. So if I, like, for example, let's give, let us let me give it a little space so that you can see that, okay, there are five garbage values. So as you can see, so this garbage value, garbage value, garbage value, garbage value, garbage value, right? But again, if I specify, let's say, the f only one element or the first element, and then I run it again. Right. So in this case, what would happen? The first element that we would have would be given the value 1, but apart from that, all the other values would get defaulted to 0. So now this is a unique property that, okay, if you just give one value inside an array, all the other values will get defaulted to 0 and no garbage value would be provided. How If I, for example, write 1, 2, so in that case, we would have 1, 2 as the first value and all the other three values in the question would get defaulted to 0, 0, 0, right? So let's go ahead. Uh, to the next question. Okay, so let me quickly go ahead and write this particular program. So for example, this is very easy. I don't think, uh, you know, it'll just take us uh, one second for us to write it. So for example, I write print f and I write 5. Uh, so plus cape I. Right, so let me run it here. So for example, let's click on run. So as you can see, mini is printed here. So what essentially happens here is, so if I'm to explain you, right, so this Capgemini gets stored in an array, which is having C, A, P, G, E, M, I, so on, so forth, right? All of these values are there. So what happens when you add five to it? So the cursor of the array, which was initially at the zero, zeroth position, right? It gets skipped to fifth position. So one, so one, two, three, four, five. So the cursor, which was currently at the zeroth position of the array in the compiler gets shifted to the fifth position. So it's like, okay, I was here, but I have been shifted here before the printf is executed. So I will print whatever I see after and including M. So this mini gets printed. So again, these kind of questions are like, like, like little tricky questions, right? Uh, so that's about it. So let's go ahead to the next question. Okay, so again, I'll give you uh, 30 seconds for you to solve it. 30 seconds is more than uh, enough, right? So this question is was not of Cape Gemini. This particular question, uh, this question I have created to, you know, demonstrate you the difference between previous question and this question, right? So there's a very slight dis uh, difference. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve it. I'm not going to write this particular program on. In fact, let's quickly, you know, just write it. Uh, so there is percentage C. So there is percentage C, comma, we have written 5 of Cape Gemini, comma, 5 of Cape Gemini, right? And in that Cape Gemini, there is a quotation here. Right, so let's, let's run this program very quickly. So as you can see, in this particular question, only M is printed. So the, the, the difference between this one and the previous one is, in the previous one, you say, you shifted the cursor to M, but this was 5 plus Cape Gemini. So whole mini was printed. But in this case, you are talking with brackets. You can consider this that, okay, array position you are talking. So in that case, only M is printed. Right. So these are the few examples of, you know, Cape Gemini from C uh, part of the uh, question. Now, what we'll do is C plus, we'll do C plus plus. Now C plus plus is also very important. Uh, out of 30 questions, approximately six to seven questions would be based on C plus plus, mainly object oriented programming concepts, right? So which is why it is very, very important for you all to understand, right? So let's go ahead. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start. Uh, let me explain you this particular question. So essentially what is happening include studio all of this, then you have class test in which you have a static variable that is int x, right? So basically static variable is shared up across all the objects of the class, right? All the object is it is shared, right? So you know, this x is shared up across, let's say there are five objects. So uh, t1, 
T2, T3, so on so forth. It is shared across all of them. And then you have a constructor. In the constructor, what is happening? You are incrementing the value of this X, right? Each time when the object is called, this con uh, created this constructor would be called, right? And then you have, you are initializing your X value outside the class, which you can do since you have used this scope resolutor, double colon. So it is initialized to zero, right? So a lot of you will say that, okay, this test of get X, this will not work and will cause runtime error. Now, again, this is a good thing in C++. You can call a function without creating any objects using this particular syntax. Maybe if you do not know this syntax or you know you did not think an alarm did not go off whenever you saw this, right? Ideally, if you're a good programmer, an alarm should go off that, okay, no object has been created. You're trying to call the function. Not possible. But then you see the proper syntax that, okay, you know, this is a syntax that is used the, wherein you can call the function without any objects. So you're like, okay, fine. Right. So in this particular point in time, what would happen? Zero would get printed. Right. Perfect. Because, but when you create, so there, here, there are five objects created and those objects are stored as an array. So here you have T of zero, there T of one, T of two, T of three. T of four, right? So these are five objects that you have created here. So every time the object is created, this constructor test is called, right? So what would happen here? This constructor test is called X plus one would happen five times. So the value which was zero is shared across all the five objects. So it will become five for all of them. So when you print this again, you will get five as an output. So answer here would be zero comma five. Right. So maybe if you got it wrong, you want to see it a little again. Right. So let's go ahead and solve the next question. Okay. So in this particular question, what would happen? I'll not even tell you the answer. I, I don't want to tell you the answer for this particular question. Right. I just want you to highlight that. Okay. We have not used public or private or protected. And what is a function if you do not specify before that uh, the access specifier mode of it? Right. So think about it. I'm not going to tell you the answer. Uh, maybe you can comment the answer for this particular question in the comment section. And if you're not able to find the answer, you can check that in the comment section. Again, we have like a giveaway round wherein, uh, you know, for the best three comments in each and every video of Prep and Star on YouTube, we give away a prime video course for the uh, completely free of cost to all of those three students. So this could be an explanation. This could be the basically a best comment and it is randomly chosen by a social media team, right? So you could also comment this part in the video, right? So let's go ahead and go ahead to the next question. Not going to tell you the answer for this one, right? So again, so uh, we've come to DSA and again, uh, the reason why I have not taken the actual questions of the exam because I wanted to take this particular thing, right? So in this case, what you have to do is you have to calculate the in order, the post order and the pre order for this particular question. What I will be doing here is I will be doing, I, I will be giving you 45 seconds for you to solve this. However, you may take a little more time than it is required. In that case, you can pause the video. So it's fine. Right. Uh, but ideally 45 seconds in 45 seconds, you should be able to write all the three if you have practiced really, really well. So uh, I'm not going to explain you how pre-order, post-order, in-order and all of them are calculated, right? This video would become very long. I will provide the link of a page wherein, you know, there would be instructions on how to calculate post-order, pre-order. So that's like the data structures page of Prem and Star. I'm going to tell you the solution of this question though, right? So for example, here, the pre-order of this particular question would be, so it starts from 25 and then, right. So in this case, it would be 25. Okay, so let me, you know, write it here. So it would be 25, it would be 15, then 10, 12, 11, 22, uh, 18, 50, 35, 44, right, and uh, 70, 66, 64, and 90. So this is pre-order, right. Um, so you can, you know, take a, so uh, for example, let's say if I write 
post order so in that case it would be so post order starts from 11 so 11 12 so 11 then you would be having 12 then you would be having 10 then you would be having 18 then you would be having 22 then you would be having 15 uh, then you would be having 44 so 15 44 um, then 35 then uh, 64 66 90 70 50 and 25 right so this is your post order and your in order would be so 10 11 12 15 18 22 25 35 44 50 64 66 uh, 70 and 90 right so this would be your answer again uh, so these guys are asking post order pre order in order type of questions as well so which is why it would be very very important for you to understand right uh, then again these guys are also asking you bubble sort insertion sort quick sort and all of these so for example if you apply bubble sort what would be the what would the array look like in pass 4 iteration 3 kind of questions like that for example if you do quick sort in that case the iteration 4 how would be how would the array look like or if you apply let's say binary search in that case uh, or, or let's say uh, merge sort in that case I, iteration 4 how would it look like so you know these kind of questions they are asking it would be a little too complex a lot of my non cs and it folks would get demotivated so which is why i'm not including that part in the video right so let's go ahead uh, and go ahead to the next question Right, so again, this is the output of the answers in the next slide. So if you were not able to get it, or maybe if I solved it incorrectly in the previous one, so you can check this out, right? So let's go into the next question. Okay, so let's understand what essentially is happening in this question, right? So basically they are saying that, okay, uh, we are given a binary tree or like whenever they say binary tree, assume that, okay, it's kind of like a full binary tree. Uh, the number of nodes with degree zero are 20. Now you have to understand your degree would be zero in the cases when you are a leaf node right so essentially there are 20 leaf nodes and you have to tell calculate the nodes wherein the degree is 2 so where the degree would be 2 for internal node right so in any tree either you are a leaf node or you are an internal node right so a lot of people who know dsa a lot you would know about something called as handshaking lemma which essentially says that in a carry tree where every node has either zero or k children, the following property is always true, right? L, so basically the formula is L is equals to uh, k minus one into i plus one, right? So the k value carry, so the k value here binary, so the k value is two. So essentially two minus one is one. So basically for our binary tree, L is equals to i plus 1 so here maybe you can not see i properly so this is capital i so which is why now i've written small i here right so l is equals to y minus 1 l is the number of internal nodes right and i essentially is the number of leaf nodes that you have right so in this case okay so uh, my mistake my mistake so basically here I told you this incorrectly. So L is equals to I plus one. So L is essentially your leaf nodes, right? That is 20. And I is the number of internal node. That is basically the value that we have to calculate the number of node with degree two, that is internal node, right? So I plus one, right? So in this case, our I value would be 19, right? So here the answer would be correct. So this was one of the questions just asked like uh, yesterday. So this was question just asked yesterday. Okay, so let's go ahead again. Uh, so this is a question related to hashing is easy question. You just need to know hashing concept. There were difficult question, but I did not took the, take them on purpose. So again, uh, basically the correct answer in this particular case, I don't even have to tell you is collision, right? So if you know hashing, you know what collision is. How do you prepare for it? Now, first of all, let's say if you go to prepinstar.com, you can study data structures from this prepare and programming and let's say 
data structures here so you can study data structures from here also c and c plus plus theoretical things you would need to learn because that's important for you to solve pseudo code you can't go ahead and learn pseudo code because there are hidden things in c and c plus plus theory you can't just directly go and be like okay let me practice pseudo code you need to know theoretical concepts of c and c plus plus so which is why these two pages apart from that you can also go to uh, let's say all platforms and from here you can go to cape gemini and you can scroll down from here let me just zoom in and uh, <clears throat> from here you can solve all the previous year questions so you can come here the pseudo code the game based aptitude test the english com competition test so let's say if you want to solve pseudo code and uh, so you can click upon start and then from here it will go ahead and start and then you can solve all of these questions from here which will be very helpful you'll get to know analytics uh, your time based performance so as you can see the average time to solve this question is 30 seconds 82 people have solved this at this time and then your ranking your accuracy your percentile are a lot many things so all the previous year papers are already there on prep insta in terms of how if you want to prepare with a course which i would highly recommend so you go ahead with a prep insta prime subscription so it's more or less like netflix so just like in netflix you don't buy one movie you buy the netflix subscription and you get access to all the movies that are there on netflix or hotstar on amazon prime right so prep insta prime is also same because obviously you won't buy cape gemini alone you will need tcs in future wipro in future C, C++, Java, Python in future. Let's say you want to do certifications in AI, ML, you will need them in future. So which is why we have a subscription that rather than one course, at the same price of one course, we want to give you 150 plus courses. So there are courses like AI, ML, AWS, Cloud, Deep Learning and Neural Networks, Cyber Security, Ethical Hacking, C, C++, Competitive Coding, Intermediate Coding. So this is basically for non-CSIT people, basic coding, intermediate coding who have who have zero knowledge in coding and want to start from scratch and become a pro. So first you do basic coding, then intermediate coding, then data structures, and then finally competitive coding. Quants, logical verbal, platforms like Code Vita, uh, AMCAD, CoCube, GLitmus, uh, My Anatomy, etc., etc. Companies like all of these service-based companies and product-based companies, uh, interview preparation courses, uh, projects like Netflix movie recommendation, breast cancer detection using AI, CS subjects. A lot many cool things are launching. Including in that, there's a Cape Gemini course also, which I guess you can check here, maybe somewhere. Just give me a second. Right, so there's this Cape Gemini course. You can click upon here, check the syllabus. These are all the things that we are covering in the Cape Gemini syllabus. Uh, basically, all uh, how many hours of what videos are there in this course that we are recommending, etc., etc. There's this course list also, so you can check the list of all the courses by clicking here. And you can check the demo videos by clicking here as well. So course list, you can see all of these courses in platforms and service-based companies, all of these courses, product-based companies, all of these coding, subjects, skills, interview prep, aptitude. There are daily live classes of approximately seven to eight hours ap apart from these things as well. You can check the demo videos here to understand the level of or the quality of videos. Also, we've partnered with TCS. So you'll get one certification from Prep Insta and another certification from TCS Ion, uh, which would be an internship certification in skills like AI, ML, etc, etc. Right. So thank you so much. Uh, one last thing that I would want to come by again is make sure that you are commenting because three people get Prime Video subscription and following us on our social media handles to get off campus updates and placement preparation. So thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you ahead in the next video. All the very best. The link to our Cape Gemini Prime video course and prepinstaprime.com is in the description of the video along with all the social media handles. So thank you. Bye-bye.